Hey everybody, welcome back to Military Surplus Bows. We've got an interesting rifle for you today. I know you guys hadn't seen us in a little while. We're going to hopefully get back into the video making business. We're going to start with this one, and, and hopefully recently you'll have seen a uh, Toker Red video go, video go up. Um, today what we've got is a Model 1886, Model 95, um, redo vert model of 1935. So this is the the most modern version of the French 8mm Lebel yet for, it, for to seen in the uh, the world. Now, 1935 is a long time ago. Uh, the reason they were still making these actually is because this rifle is not for use by uh, the French military itself. They were actually issuing these to mostly their colonial troops. Uh, in particular, France was issuing these to uh, colonial Africa, um, out, out in that area and whatever other land, land holdings they would have had in, say, Southeast Asia. So um, they didn't make but a couple thousand of these, so these are actually a pretty uncommon gun. The, uh, the longer version is much more common. Uh, this one is sort of a carbine model. Now, this was not cut down. This is actually how this, this gun was made, but we're looking at about an 18 to 20 inch barrel here, which for this rifle is very short. The originals would have been uh, much closer to, the, to the, uh, the long 20s as far as length. Now this gun is a straight straight uh, bolt action. It is not straight pull. You do have to, you know, go over and up, of course. But um, it feeds in a very strange way. If you come in here, you can kind of see this. So normally, um, for most uses, you're going to have a single shot. You just put that in there, right there. Run the bolt forward, of course, and then you would fire. Okay. So we're not going to do that yet because we haven't shot yet. We're not going to shoot yet. But that's single shot. So you've got a little lever down here. This is kind of your selector switch if you want to look at it that way. Now there's no fun lever. We don't get full auto in this gun. Obviously, it's not set up for that. But we do have an option to run the magazine. Okay. So when we put it in the back in the back position here you actually have a tube magazine now you're saying what tube magazine there's nothing there okay well you have to kind of press this out of the way you've got this little door at the bottom so if you're familiar at all kind of with how a uh, shotgun loads well this is kind of similar to that but kind of from the top now there's a tube magazine that runs up under here and I know you can't see that but it, it's kind of sits in this in this uh, handguard area now there's nowhere for us to load from the bottom so this is not going to work like a typical shotgun of course it's not it is going to, in fact, load from the top. So this is very fiddly, and hopefully I can do this kind of kind of competently, but you have to push rounds in that way. I've got one. Now, somebody's going to go, this is really dangerous, you've got a spitzer around. Well, there's a good reason that we can do this, because we've got a little groove around the primer that lets you put pointy bullets next to each other. It sits in that groove and doesn't move around. So this is not dangerous. It looks dangerous. It's not dangerous. Now... Uh, this is a little fiddly to get all three rounds in here. It is a three round magazine, which is not quite frankly the height of uh, Technology at the time even when they were making this, this is in the 30s. So I guess your colonial troops don't need everything um, that you've got which There we go. There's second round uh, It's also a reason why during World War one when this was in use uh, if you ran the magazine out you were gonna single single load This is not an efficient uh, System here it uh, it kind of works We'll say that. If I can get this third one in, I'll be happy. Go round. Hey, there's a third round. Okay. So at this point, you're going to run the top here. Okay. You've got your single load. You're going to load around there. Okay, and we're ready to go. So we've got one in the pipe, three in the tube. We're ready to go. I'm going to put my safety glasses and my ears on. And let's just see this thing in action. Now, I will tell you that to run this gun properly, you kind of have to run it really hard, run it like a truck, as we've said in some previous videos. Uh, you can't really hurt the gun, but in order for it to work correctly, you've got to run the bolt back really hard. You've got to run it forward really hard. If you don't do that, this gun will not run. And that, that I understand, is pretty typical of a lot of these um, older LaBelle rifles because they, they have to be uh, run rather, uh, let's see, intentionally. So we'll see what we can do here. I've got a plate down range. I've got a uh, IDPA target. We'll take a couple of shots on the IDPA and see if I can hit the, uh, the plate as well. So here we go. All right, so we are loaded. There is no manual safety on this, so it is hot. The French did not uh, really believe in a manual safety. So uh, we'll take them at their word and start on the uh, IDPA here. And it makes a hell of a noise. This thing is loud. Like I said, you got to run it all the way back. So bring that up. You kind of hear it. Usually you hear a loading. Oh, I've got it on single shot. That's why. So we'll put this back that way. And now I can load from the magazine. 
So we'll bring this back this way. You hear a little click there, it brings a round up, and then you can bring that up here. And so it just kind of appears in the loading area. And you push that forward and you're ready to go again. All right, second shot on IDPA here. All right, so he's probably dead now. We will attempt to, okay, we'll attempt to get a second round in here. That's, that's the sound, that's the click. All right, now we're gonna try our, um, our steel target down range and see if we can hit him. Now this, this rifle is, uh, is ranged for 200 meters. There is no 100 meter zero, but I've found that you can pretty much put it on what you want to hit and it will go there. And it hit him hard. My God, that plate did not look happy. We'll try that one more time. I got one more round in there. Got to get that click. It doesn't like me right now. Ah, there he is. Okay, so obviously not the best mechanical system. If somebody was designing this today, they would say he was crazy. It was pretty cool for about two years when this was the most powerful rifle on the planet, literally. Um, but uh, for the moment, it's really not not so hot. Uh, let's go one more time, see if I can hit the plate a second. Oh, I was near him. All right, so we're out of ammo now. Now, I want to be really, really careful to not load 8mm Hungarian or 7.62x54R, which is what both of those are, so the, those can stay over there. Um, as a fun fact, since we're going to single load now, we can leave this gate up. Um, this ammo is actually... Hotchkiss machine gun ammo, so it's it's rather hot. This gun is more than strong enough to take it, but um, it and it is. If you'll notice up here, Balle in marked, which is the most recent um, production of French ammo for eight millimeter Lebel. So this the, the gun itself is more than strong enough for this ammo. So if anybody's worrying about that, don't worry, we're good. Uh, let me see if I can put one more on the target, and we'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so we got one more on the steel plate here. Take a. Slow trigger pull here. Ah, I was near him. Let me get one more before we stop. One more, one more, one more. Despite the loud noise, it actually doesn't hit that hard. Uh, even even being a carbine, so, you know, pretty comfortable, really. I'm um, just off to the left. It doesn't have especially awesome extraction either. It throws stuff, so, um, or it leaves it in the chamber. You, you have to be pretty deliberate. Ah. I'm going to use up all my expensive machine gun ammo doing this. Put them slightly to the right here. My glasses are fogging up. It's quite hot out here in South Carolina. There we go. All right. Let me go make sure I'm not destroying my metal target. It seems like it's hitting it really hard. Uh, and we'll be right back with you, okay? Cool. All right. These three rounds, although they look very similar all from Europe, are not in fact the same thing. You've got three different things here. Um, you have 8mm French Label, you have 8mm by 56 Hungarian, and 762 by 54 r rimmed Russian rounds. Um, again, you can kind of see that they were, these are all very early smokeless powder rounds, and they all kind of have a similar heritage, because this one, the 8mm Label, is the first one, and these two kind of copied it. All right, so we did put a few rounds in the IDPA target. We didn't focus on him too much. He's mostly still alive. Although, uh, I should point out, this was a hostage target, so apparently I killed the hostage. Um, you know, three-inch, uh, or three-shot three, uh, three shot group, really not too bad. Uh, you can put your hand over it, so really, you know, it's uh, not too terrible, really, for an old French rifle. We're going to uh, just single load this for the rest of the day. That magazine tube is extremely fiddly. I don't particularly care for it, and really... Anytime I could have gotten a K98, I would have dropped this and got it. Um, the German engineering is German engineering for a reason. It's much better. Um, so this ammo is kind of weird. This, let me tell you a story. So uh, we went to a gun show locally here in South Carolina, and uh, you know I'm going around with my friends. I have other people looking for this ammo for me. Uh, you know we know we need to shoot this rifle for a video, and everybody's like, Nah, you know you're, you're never gonna find that ammo. That doesn't exist. You know. Uh, you know, nobody's making it anymore, and as it happens, uh, I've actually Privy Partisan, I think, is still making brass for it, although I don't think they manufacture it new. Uh, Precision Cartridge Company does. This ammo is surplus. Like I said, it's Hotchkiss machine gun ammo, and we found one little old man sitting in the middle of the gun show. We were like, hey, do you have 8mm Lebel? 
totally not expecting him to have one. He had this huge ammo crate full of it, um, and we've got we've got kind of my my goodie bag over here full of it now. Um, this is not all of it. This is just what we brought out that brought to uh, shoot today. Um, but it is it is uh, putting some marks in that steel, and uh, this is an old steel plate, so don't feel bad for Mr. Steel. But uh, we're gonna hit him a couple more times, put a couple couple more rounds on the IDPA target, and look at look at kind of the uh, patterning on that. Now we went down and looked at it between shots here. And it seems to be shooting pretty low, so we're just going to put it straight on the center of the target, and hopefully that will that will kind of do it for us. So let's uh, go ahead and load up here, make ready, and fire. Okay, I'm put my ears back on. This thing is very loud, uh, given that it is a short carbine and a full house military round, and we'll uh, we'll put a couple more hits on this thing. All right, here we go. Hit. Piece to the left. I got to hold over a little bit, I think. Put a couple more rounds out here. All right, there's one. All right. I'll read those because I cannot see. It's getting dark here. All right, here we go. Just to the left, right? Yep, just to the left. Okay. Try that again. Here we go. I'm near it. Put one on the IDPA target here. That definitely went through him. So it's definitely minute of bad guy. Okay. Try one more. I put it slightly to the to the right here. Gonna con not Kentucky windage, I guess. Here is really French windage. We'll try it here. Hey. Yep. Shoots just a little bit left, but you know, for a rifle that's aging as gracefully as this is that's really not bad one of the funny things about this rifle is when we picked it up uh, from a local sports retailer around uh, our area um, the the rifling in this looks like it has never been shot practically um, I mean I'm not into the whole like you know um, only uh, never used only dropped once kind of joke with the French I actually find that kind of a, offensive but it really doesn't look like this thing was used much um, but in any case it still shoots pretty straight a little off to the left, and that might be that might be an issue of age or just the uh, the type of sights we've got on this thing, so which are a little bit hard to read. Let's see if we can hit him one more time. I was near him. You gotta remember this is a, a kind of a about I would say a two thirds size man target down there. So if we're in the ballpark, we're probably hitting somebody who's real size. If this was a if this was a war situation, but um, you know it's supposed to make it a little bit more difficult at distance, which it certainly seems to be doing here. So, all right, one more, one more. Uh, near him. I would blame the ammo. The ammo is also probably older than the gun, uh, or certainly in the same age range. Let's see. Mm, near it. All right, let's see. Try one more, one more, one more. Okay. Hey, there we go. Hit him. Yeah, you gotta hold. You gotta hold off to the right. You gotta hold off to the right. One more. Hold off to the right. I uh, feel like I was near it. Let's see. I'm probably going to be watching all this footage later going like, yeah, I'm like one inch off to the left. That, yeah. that was definitely on the left side of the plate. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can bring it over a little bit and hit him in the center. I think that hit him. Just off. Yeah, not a lot of extraction there. All right. I want to end on a hit. Wherever we get, we'll end on a hit. All right. One more. Hey, there we go. All right. We're going to take this out a little bit longer range now. We'll see if we can hit it at distance. All right, welcome to the disassembly portion of this video. Um, we're not going to take this rifle all the way down. We're not doing a field strip of it per se, and I really don't want to break any of the uh, sort of delicate uh, parts of this gun. The gun is um, a very old design. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find parts for it if I happen to break something. So what we'll be uh, focusing on today is uh, the bolt disassembly and some of the kind of uh, basic features of the rifle. Um, 
Of course, you've seen it shooting. Uh, before we go out to long range, I want to look at a couple of the uh, things up close here. So, um, obviously, it is a turnable system. We have looked at kind of the unique upside down shotgun loading system. Uh, of course, you've got your tube magazine up there, or you can select for a single shot. Um, it is a turn bolt system, so that really isn't tremendously unique compared to most uh, World War I and II rifles. You do have a uh, sight leaf out here for various distances. It is metered out between um, what appears to be 200 meters and 1,000 meters, um, or my understanding is you can flip over for a, uh, a battle site, but that does not appear to be available on this particular model. The, uh, the original Lebel I think allowed for that, but this one does not. Um, you will see uh, the marking on top of the receiver here for uh, Bale in cartridges. This one was updated to the, uh, the newer Bale in uh, round. Um, you can see all the manufacturing marks here. Manufactured to arms to send at the end. I'll flip that over for you guys so you can see that. So. Uh, manufactured to arms, to Saint Etienne, that's the, uh, the National Arsenal of France. And then you have model MLE 1886, um, M93, the modification of 93, revision 1935, R35. Um, the numbers on this gun do not match. Uh, it does function, however, uh, it is not a matching uh, numbers matching gun, but it is very functional, it does work. Um, one interesting thing about this gun and hopefully this is visible on uh, this uh, video or I'll take a picture of one of the two. There are actually some Krakow um, German markings here. So this more than likely was um, captured as a German uh, use rifle. It does have a KRU and then a, uh, a uh, um, German um, eagle with swastika markings there. There's actually two of them. There's one, one high and one low. Um, okay, so let's now look at the uh, disassembly of the bolt. Uh, first thing is, uh, there is no way to remove this bolt uh, from the system without a tool. Uh, you cannot simply pull it out the back by pulling the trigger. There is no removal um, placement here or anything. This has no effect on the bolts or anything. It's more or less stuck in there until you realize there is actually a screw there. So. All right, you want to take the screw out of the bolt here, which is a bit difficult to do backwards, and I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here. Take that screw out of there. Okay, set that aside. You don't want to lose that. You will have a very difficult time finding those. Um, you take the bolt about halfway back, and you turn this front head portion of the bolt to the side and kind of just ease that off of the rest of the bolt. Again, uh, place that down here. We'll come back to him in a minute. And you can take the rest of the bolt out of the gun. Okay, once you've got your bolt to this point, which uh, really is the easy part, I think. Uh, none of this is tremendously difficult to take apart, but uh, you've got your screw out, you've got your bolt head off. You can, of course, remove things like the extractor up here, which uh, for fear of breaking things I'm actually not going to do and I don't really know if I can find extra parts if I do do that. So um, we are not going to do that today. Uh, in order to take the rest of your bolt apart what you'll need is uh, something to protect your table or workbench um, as you're going to need to punch this uh, firing pin down into it. Um, since I don't really want to mess up my table I'm going to use a stack of sticky cards here. So um, or sticky notes. Um, you'll notice that there are two uh, grooves cut into not only the cocking piece but also uh, the back portion of the bolt here. You're going to um, want to, well, first of all, your bolt is probably in the cock position at this point since you just took it out of the gun. You will need to um, decock that, so put that down in that groove to the right. See that groove kind of matches there. Um, you'll want to, uh, once you have it decocked, line these two grooves on the back of the bolt up, kind of like that. You'll see there. Okay, um, and then press the firing pin into your pad. You can also use plywood for this. I've seen plywood used as well. Um, press that down into the pad and then um, kind of take your piece off there. There's a groove cut into this that lets it slide on and off. 
you, slide, you just let the pressure off there, you should then be able to take off the cocking piece and then allow the firing pin and spring to come out of the bolt body. Um, and that's your fully um, taken apart and field stripped bolt there. Okay, we are losing light really, really quickly right now. We're going to shoot out at 300 yards. That is a big plate at that distance, but this is a short rifle for that distance. And quite frankly, it's uh, there's a lot of drop in this in this uh, round. Now, we have done a little bit of shooting ahead of time. You can see it took us a few rounds to figure out where this is going. But I think I've got it pretty well zeroed now, and I know where it's going to go. So uh, quickly, let's shoot this while I can still see it. And again, uh, at Military Surplus Bows, we generally recommend eye protection. I cannot see this at this light without it, so uh, I guess if I die, you guys won't see this. So uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, like I said, I've got a general idea where this is supposed to be, so if I don't hit one of the two of these, don't be surprised. That was probably near it. You have to take my word for this. I did hit three of those right before we started shooting, so we've got an idea where it's supposed to be. Let's see. Ah, yeah, there we go. The old girl can run. The old girl can run. Let's see if we can do that one more time. You got me, Frenchie? Let's go. Let's see. One more. Hoorah! That's a, that's a long way for you, buddy. All right, let me get a third one. If I can get a third one, we'll stop right there because we're probably really outrunning the ability of this gun at this, at this distance without an optic and my ability to see, quite frankly. So here we go. I get, ah, never end on a miss. Try that again. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's see if I can see it. I'm near it. All right, baby, you can do this. Here we go. Might have hit it. Wasn't real strong. We'll give it one more. All right, come on, let's go. You can do it. You can do it. Take out that Nazi plate. Hoorah! All right, well, I'm going to end it there. Uh, she can run. She's old, but she can run. It's a hell of a rifle. Wouldn't have believed it. Wouldn't have believed it. Y'all have a good one. If you want more Military Surplus Brothers, there's going to be an ender at the end of this show. Make sure you uh, support your uh, your local blood donation banks. I know we do at the channel. Um, every, every unit of blood you give can save three lives. Remember that. All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you guys later. Military Surplus out. Bye.